Homelessness is an ever-present shame on our society. On an average night in England in 2016, 4,000 people were sleeping rough. That's double the figure in 2010. In London alone, more than 8,000 people are homeless every year and the number is steadily on the rise. The figures alone are shocking, but how often do we hear the human stories behind the statistics? About five years ago, I lost my home um, and I sofa surfed. My daughter went to live with my mum. My boys were old enough, they were fending for themselves, so I sort of found myself floating. I became homeless because uh, I lived with my mum. Then we had a few, lot of arguments with my mum and my sisters. I was told to leave the house. Then I was renting somewhere and I couldn't afford to rent every week and just become homeless and that was it. I was just on the streets for about two years from from that day. It started with having an accident at work, which uh, put me permanently off sick so far. I was off for six months when I was finally diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Um, unfortunately, I was made homeless a week later. I was evicted from the place I was staying at. Homelessness manifests itself in so many different ways. Sleeping rough is the most obvious, but there is hidden homelessness too. People staying in B&Bs, hostels, squats, sofa surfing with friends because they have no place to call home. When you're sofa surfing, you, it, it's lovely. You feel, you feel so grateful and people are so kind and they, they want, oh, come and stay at mine, it's fine, it's not yours though. No. I think I quite took it for granted. I'd always have a house, I'd always have a roof. Everyone else has got a roof, so why not? You know, you don't ever think that you'll be in a situation where you're going to wake up the next morning and not know where you're sleeping that night. I sort of spiralled, really. I didn't know what to do. Well, the daytime, I'd just wake up in the morning, roll my sleeping bag up, put it in my rucksack, then I'd just walk the streets, try and get some money. As soon as I made myself 20, 30 quid, I'd go and buy myself a bag of, like a bag of heroin, a bag of crack, and find somewhere, smoke it, and then that's all the day would consist of. Eventually, you'd, you'd have so much drugs inside you, you'd just pull your sleeping bag up, unroll it, and just sleep anywhere, any door place, or anywhere that was not so windy and not so cold. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it was horrible ways to be, but that's the way it was. Physically, the effects of homelessness can be terrible but the impact on a person's mental health can be devastating. Feeling dehumanised and demoralised, homeless people can feel totally alienated from society. An estimated third of single homeless people suffer from mental health problems, with depression more than 10 times higher than the general population. I was just constantly thinking, I can't, I can't be on the street, I'm gonna die. And yeah, it was, it was, Really, really hard. Very scary. I mean, there were so many times when I nearly fell down and I thought, oh, if I fall down and hit my head, that's it. Not one person thought to stop and say, are you OK? Do you need help? Is everything all right? Just, you become invisible to everybody. A lot of people used to just look down on you like you're, like you're a bit of dirt, really, and just walk past you with no sort of like thought in the mind. Well, it just demoralises you, it just makes you feel the lowest of the low light, and really you're not, you're just basically homeless. My eldest son had to section me, which is something that I find very hard to get my head around. I feel so sorry for him. It's not something any son should have to witness, no son should have to go through that. I was eventually offered a temporary accommodation by the housing while they investigated my case. Uh, they decided that they didn't have to offer any help at all. And luckily I had a very good housing officer who referred me to Karata Sanka House. It took about six weeks, but I got the phone call 
and came in for my assessment. And then I think it was only about three or four days later, they phoned and said, your room's ready. So yeah, here I am, all fresh and trying to get better. I've asked for a referral myself to Karen Sasanka House because I'd heard good things about it. And thank God they accepted me because they've just turned my life completely upside down. When I first came into Carrick to thank that house and they gave me the room that I had, I was just amazed really because I had the telly, I had a bath and a shower. Right, it was just amazing, just actually, like the first night, I think I had a bath first, then I had a shower. In the end, when I'd settled down into my room, I was just kind of sat there, like, you've got a bed and the, there's a shower. I was like, I didn't know what to do first. Just like, have a shower or go and have something to eat or wander around, talk to people. Yeah, it was really, it was quite a day. <laughs> I sat on my bed with my agreement the first day I moved in, which was the 6th of October last year, and I cried for hours, ages. I didn't even know what I was crying. I was just looking at this bit of paper crying because it was mine. It was a room in a massive building, but I had my shower, my toilet, my bed, my television. That was my space. Then I stood in the shower for an hour. Just stood there, we went under the water like this. Yeah. Mm. It was absolutely amazing. And then since then, I've just gone from strength to strength. I got my stall. <laughs> we started in around June, I think it was, um, with one table and a row, and it's now absolutely huge. It gives the residents in here opportunities for volunteering, gets them in a mode for working, because a lot of people haven't worked for a long time. When they've been on the streets, you can't get a job because you haven't got an address. First and foremost, I, I sort the residents out if anyone needs clothing, because quite often you'll get people that will walk in here with nothing. People take the basic clothing needs or necessities for granted in life, even down to tin openers and simple little things that you, you ain't got because you, you, you haven't had a house for God knows how long. You, haven't, you can't carry it all round in bags. Caritas Anchor House is literally a lifesaver for homeless people. It provides accommodation for those who need it, but so much more, a structured programme to help people back on their feet and love, care, friendship and support through the hardest moments in their lives. Its impact is a transformation. Well, the minute I got into Characters Anchor House, I was given a lifestyle architect, they're like key workers, and they just told me what, what I needed to do and how I could do it. I've stopped using completely now. I just really want to get back into work and just, well, just fulfil the things I want to do and stop wasting all my time doing nothing. I've done exams. <laughs> what else have I done? I've done so much. If they find out that you're interested in a particular career, they will push you in any way they can to get you there. Well, Character Sanger House has saved me, really. If I'd still been on the street, I'd still be on drugs or probably dead by now. The way I felt on the street, I felt as if I was nothing. But the minute I come to Character Sanger House, they made me feel as if I was worth something. And, yeah, I feel much better for myself now. When you're out on the street, you do kind of feel worse than a dog. The dog will be picked up before it's had a chance to even feel the cold. So, yeah, coming to... Carita Sanka House, yeah, they do, they make you feel like a human being again. Like, they see you. Even when I leave here, I'll still do what I can to help them. I'll always, I'll always be around. I'm so grateful because I honestly don't think I'd be around. I mean, I had the worst year I've ever, ever had. But now I can say it was the best worst thing that ever happened to me. Because if it hadn't been for that, I wouldn't have come here. And my life would have carried on spiralling. They kind of pick you up and point you. I don't know where I'd be without Carita Sanka House. I don't think I'd be here. They gave me back me, and probably a bit more. <laughs>